Welcome G3 investors. This is Greg Gallagher. And we're going to take a look at the week ended January 11th, the second week in 2019. Well, now's the time to sign up for G3 investors. Not only is our model up almost 4% in 2019, and that's after significant gains in 2018, 43.8% and 29% in 2017, our first year, but it is still free from now until January 31st. To sign up, just email me at greg at g3investors.com. You can go here for our website. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Greg Gallagher at ggdusty. And these are the things that you get, the extras you get when you sign up for a membership. Uh, as I said, it's free for, the, for this month, and then it's $200 annually or $30 a month. If you like this YouTube video, Go ahead and hit like, share with friends, or whatever. Okay, well, we're going to take a look at the model. So the model is up 3.9%. Here we've got uh, 3,700 in realized gains, 4,200 in unrealized gains. Uh, Bob's buy and hold model is leading us by 0.8%. So Bob's been bragging. That's a joke. He's an idiot my alter ego uh, but anyway uh, the we're still beating the S&P 500 by almost 0.4 percent and but we're trailing or lagging the Nasdaq by 1.1 percent amazingly enough the Nasdaq Nasdaq is not the leader this year the leader is the Russell 2000 so that's different from last year but the other thing I want to point out here is we've gotten off to a rough start uh, I had like six losing trades in a row, but I want to point something out. This is the lowest winning trade percentage of 48% that I've had in any year since I started this, this exercise. And uh, so we've had 13 small losers and 12 winners, and yet we're up 3.9%. Now, how is that possible? Well, it, it's possible by keeping your losses small, as you can see here, all of our losses, these are the, the stuff highlighted in this reddish pink color here. Uh, I'm sure my wife knows what color that is, but I don't know. But anyway, so with all those losses, we've only lost 1500 bucks. yet we've got, un, we've got realized gains of 3700 And then down here with our 15 open positions, we've got gains of $4,182. And we'll take a look at that in a little bit. But right now, I want to I want to look at uh, the market. Okay, so we we went into a correction back here with the Nasdaq leading the correction on October the fourth, two thousand and eighteen, and you can say we we went straight down, 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 down. Well, now we've had this what I would call a retracement. I've drawn a purple line across here. Uh, that's in addition to our normal blue line, which is the 50-day moving average, and the red line, which is the 200-day moving average. And you can see that the blue line has crossed the red line, meaning that we are in a correction phase for the NASDAQ and for the market in general. But this blue line here is the 50% re the retracement line. Now, we, I don't really follow the fi Fibonacci sequence and all that, but a lot of people, market participants do, so I'm, I therefore have to watch that. But this is the first level of resistance that the market's going to run into. And as you can see from this, it's very close. As a matter of fact, it's, it's uh, only about 179 points away from this. Okay, that's the first area or designation of, of resistance. So we're only 2.6% 2 2 away from that with this retracement that we've had. Now, last Friday, we had a huge up day. This was on the 4th, where the NASDAQ made 4.3% per gains. And then we've had this four-day surge. This is the only day where we didn't increase the gains. Okay, but so five straight, five straight up days. Okay, what's causing all that? Well, it's uh, a new year, so the market's always excited. January is usually a time... When the market, you know, you have people 
investing in their IRAs and they're, they're, they've repositioned their 401ks and everything. So it's a good time for the market. Plus, you've had the holidays. Generally, the retail stocks have done good. So in anticipation of positive earnings, and, and you know, we, this, this Friday number was a blowout number on uh, the uh, unemployment report. We had 312,000 new jobs added that last Friday, so let's not forget that. But what really has happened this week is the Fed speak. I mean, every it, it seemed like every day a Fed head was coming out and reassuring the market. As soon as the market would start to falter, the Fed would come out and say, "Oh, wait a minute, we're going we're only going to give you two rate increases, or maybe none at all. We'll drop this pesky uh, repayment of the QE, quantitative easing." But you know, it, it's that. And then there was three days of of trade talks held held with China, and I'm, I'm not trying to be negative or anything. It was positive, but there's no agreement here. You know, I mean, we. We don't have anything, so we are still in a bull market. And what I'm pointing out here is this retracement here is normal. And here's the big overhang up here in this red line. We, bad things happen when you're below the 200-day moving average. This is not a good thing for the market. It's not going to go higher until it reacquires first the blue line. Hadn't even reacquired that, which is the 50-day moving average. And it, it, I mean, it has to give it above it and stay above it and live above it. It can't just pop above it and go, ha ha. Then it's got to get across this red line. And then to make new highs, it's got to go all the way up to 8,100. That's a lot of work, folks. A heck of a lot of work. Now, is it positive? Yes. Is it getting better? Yes. And what's leading the market? Well, <laughs> Fangman stocks. We'll take a look at that in a little bit here. But I want to talk a little bit about what's leading this market in the way of ETFs. Well, probably the biggest gainer of all is housing. XHB is housing. Okay. Now that gain, that little gain right there off that bottom, we got in at 33. That's that's a 7.2% gain. So that's a nice little gain right there. Uh, we got stopped out here. I, I, you know, I'm, have, I'm putting in really close stops because I don't want to lose. I want to keep those losses small. And really, this week is the what I would call return, return to normal. Uh, what we saw in the past three months, and really the, even the first week of 2019, is not normal. It's not normal for the market to go up and down 1 and 2 and 3% a day uh, every day. You know, it, this is normal right here. I mean, if, if there is such a thing. Uh, let's take a look at some of the others that, that are good. These are closed positions that we're looking at. Well, uh, IBB was a good one. Okay, and I probably set the stop too, too tight here. I got stopped out here, and we got back in it, but I'm okay with that because I just get right back in. You know, um, so, you know, we, we're in it. You know, we've already realized 6.5% gain off of that move, off of this bottom here. Again, this one looks like it's getting ready to reacquire its 200-day moving average. It is already living above its 50-day moving average, and I didn't, I didn't put in the retracement, but I'm sure it's, it's above that as well. Just looking at the chart. Uh, another gainer, uh, XME, that we closed out. Not as, not as impressive. And it got out of that one. It started to go sideways. So we got a 5.3% gain on that one. Uh, that one's still way down below its 200-day moving average. And it's not really, uh, metals and mining is not really an exciting area of the market. Uh, a big mover has been XM, XLE, which is the energy select sector. And that's up 4.7%. And, you know, we, we went up and then we kind of went sideways here and I got out. Why? Because I want to see it get above this, this line here. That's got to get above this line and then this line for me to really get excited about energy again. You know, we're coming up on winter. Winter's not a time where people travel a lot and we have a lot of usage for gas. As a matter of fact, if we have a bad winter, people are going to stay in. But OPEC and everybody's doing everything they can do to raise the price of energy. And, of course, Donald Trump is saying, no, 
I'm going to produce all the energy we need, and we got oil coming out of the Marcellus Formation out west and all over the world. Uh, we're, it's a glut of oil, really, basically. So the other thing I want to do is let's look at some of the, the open positions we have. One of the ones that's been really strong is has been uh, ITA, or as I like to call it, Boeing. <laughs> it basically is Boeing. Well, Boeing took it on the chin last year, and it went down, and then it, it's recovered. Still has a long way to go, so that's exciting. If this does become a market that's going to go back, and it's going to erase this correction, and happy days are going to be here again, we're set to take full advantage of it. And that's what trend trading makes trend trading so excited. Exciting. Sorry. Uh, let's take a look at XLI. Now you'll see all these have a pattern. We have this big down, you know, bear market, basically. Uh, and it's going up the hockey stick, as I like to call it. Okay, that's normal. This is a normal trace retracement. Everything you're seeing is here normal. But just because it's normal and it might not it might not work out doesn't mean we don't want to trade it. We do want to trade it. So when it gets above one, two, three here, as you see on this little chart, we got in. And on this one we stayed in because it just went straight up. But again, it still has to require reacquire its 50-day, and hopefully it'll go up here and reacquire the 200 day or at least get up there close. That's my hope. That's my goal, because I'm going to make a lot of money. What it does after that, I don't care, as long as it moves somewhere. All right, one last one. Let's take, well, I'm going to, I want to look at these two, IJK. Uh, this is the, the mid-cap 400 growth. This tells me, well, we know the S&P is going up. We know the, the NASDAQ is going up. What, what, what's going up within them other than the FANG men stocks, which I'll get to in a minute here? Well, it's the mid-cap 400. This is a nice 4.4% 4. 4. 4 move here. Um, nothing wrong with this at all. It's a very nice move, and we've caught the move, and we're still in it. IJT, this is the small-cap 600 ETF. Very, very good ETF to trade. We've made a lot of money on this last year, and, it, and we're starting out with a 4.1% gain so far this year. So... I'm very pleased with how the tradings went, even though I'm batting 50% instead of 60 or to 65%, which is what I'm normally used to batting. We'll get that back. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not in the least bit worried about it. Now, the, the last thing I want to do here, uh, I want to take a look at the heat map. Okay, this is one day performance. It doesn't really show us much. I want to look at the the year-to-date performance, which would be for 2016, or 2019, sorry. The reason I want to look at that is, you know, we, we've gotten 5.1% uh, uh, gain year-to-date on uh, and month-to-date on the NASDAQ, and we got a 7.3% gain. Well, what's causing that gain? Sorry here, I don't know how I get out of this. There. Well, again, I said, here's here's Facebook, Fang Man, Facebook. 9.7%, Amazon, 9.2%, NVIDIA, 11.4%, Apple, well, there's the dog of the Fang Man stocks, but look at Netflix, what in the world is going on here? Well, it's, I call it the bird box phenomenon. You know, uh, Netflix comes out with new programming, this stock got decimated last year, uh, I mean, and it was just absolutely crushed. Uh, and, you know, if we take a look at the chart on Facebook, it'd be well worth looking at it. Uh, or, I'm sorry, Netflix. Netflix, NFLX. I mean, that is a big correction. And that is a nice recovery. Just took a few days here. We've reacquired our 50-day moving average. And now we're up here testing and we've reacquired our, our 200 day moving average and it, it probably will go on to break new highs they did have earnings per share of 89 cents a share so that's another good thing so again that's one of the leaders that we got out there and and it's 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 netflix or bird box and so hey that, that made 13 percent for the week the net the nasdaq uh 
or I mean the, the Fang Man stocks. Let me go back and look at the, our uh, market update here for a little bit. There's some of the stuff I talked about, and there's the gains and stuff and the lagging. Oh, it's another good thing. Uh, the technicals have improved. We're still in a bear market. Why do I say that? Well, it keeps improving, but look at this. This is still red here. Our 200-day moving average is still above. We have 75% of the 7,400 stocks tracked by Finviz are below their 200-day moving average. That's not good. Okay, and we updated our 40 ETFs. We've got five that are above their 50-day and the 200-day moving average. We've got gold and silver plus three short ETFs, uh, which are included in, in that. Then we've got XLU and UNG, which are above their 200-day but below the, their 50-day. So they're in never-never land. Uh, they're not even rocking and rolling yet. But we've got 31 ETFs that are trading below their 200-day moving average. 90% of, or 36% of the ETFs that are followed have negative charts. And 29 of those have black crosses where the 50-day moving average has crossed below the 200-day moving average, just like I showed you in the examples. That's not good. But what's driving the market? Well, this week we have gains of 4.8%. There's 13.5% on Netflix, which we just talked about. Uh, the other interesting thing, that the, the new bit of news that I didn't share, but I should, Amazon and Microsoft are battling it out for the market cap leader. Uh, you know, these, these companies, well, a Apple and Amazon, I think, I'm not sure about, maybe Microsoft, they hit or got, I know Apple got to over a uh, trillion dollars, but uh, now they've taken over the lead and Apple's dropped, drops to third place. So, but Fangman continues to, to, we to lead. And, you know, that's a good thing. So, you know, it's early. Uh, next, next week, earnings season starts in earnest, well, the, we'll get some banks and and some of the some of the big uh, S and P leaders will be, uh, you know, there's just a slew of them. So we'll see how they react to their earnings. That's the key to where we go from here. Well, this is Greg Gallagher with G3 Investors, and I'm wishing you good luck, success in 2019, and good trading.